All right, in the last video we talked a little bit about requiring um, packages and modules, and this video we're gonna dive into our first one and actually start using it, and that's gonna be the file system module. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward, although it has a really big API. As you can see, there's a ton of different cool things it can do, but basically it's for reading and writing and uh, you know any kind of um, mutating or exploration of the file system. So we're just going to do something really simple at first. So I'm going to go into my little project here. I'm just going to delete this file just to kind of keep things tidy. So we don't need two different JavaScript files right now. Um, so we just have this index file and it just console logs hello for now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and we'll call it like index.txt. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and grab some lorem ipsum. Uh, just some some filler text because uh, boy oh boy I'm just gonna grab some text about lorem ipsum I'm gonna paste it in here and we can toggle on soft wrap so we can really see it okay so we've got these two paragraphs of text and this is not a JavaScript file so again here's where we're starting to step into the zone of what node can do beyond just JavaScript um, so we'll use the ES6 syntax um, for those that aren't familiar with it um, uh, this const declaration. I have a series on nodecast.io covering ES6 and one of them is on the different variable declaration types so you can check that out if you want. Um, so we'll do const fs equals require fs and just like before we can go ahead and console log fs to kind of make sure that we have what we want to have here. We're on node and we can see this huge API of all this cool stuff. Great. So now that we've got it um, we can start using some of the library APIs. Um, so for this one, let's just read in the file. So we can do fs, which we required here, dot read file, and then we specify which file. So it's index.txt. And just like regular JavaScript stuff, we've got this callback function, uh, and it has two parameters. One is an error, and one is the actual data that it calls back. And basically what we can do in here is we can do like, you know, if there is an error, uh, return and I guess we can just like console log whatever the error is um, and if there's not an error we can console log uh, whatever the data is and we can just call to string on it um, cool so basically this is gonna read in the file index.txt if there's an error it'll tell us and otherwise it'll read out the file so I'm gonna go back to node I'm just gonna type clear on this and make it a little bit bigger so it's easier for us to see and then I'm going to run node on index.js and boom, there's the lorem ipsum. So this is pretty cool. Uh, and similarly, like if I had a typo in here and I couldn't find it and I ran node on it, I'd get the error, no such file or directory in text. Uh, great. So we got all that stuff working, which is cool. Uh, one thing that I'd like to point out here, and this is going to be something that we discuss a lot, uh, going forward is one of the powerful things about node.js is that it can do a lot of things asynchronously. Uh, so for those of you that are familiar with client-side JavaScript, uh, you might think about things like Ajax or, um, you know, just general, like you've heard this idea of blocking or non-blocking. Um, and, and the basic concept here is that um, Node.js, the core APIs, uh, are all asynchronous. They're non-blocking things. So let's see, like, for example, if we did something like this, console log dot... Uh, we are finished, right? And then I go ahead and then I run node on it. We get this really weird order of events, right? We get we are finished before we read all of this stuff. So what's going on here is this is like asynchronous code. So it starts parsing it and it requires this. This is blocking, so it'll wait until this is all in here. And then it notices this fs read file, which is an asynchronous request. So it like goes off in the background basically and it starts reading in this text. But it's like, okay, that's asynchronous. Is there anything else I can do after this function? So it finds this console log, which is a synchronous request, and it uh, console logs it. Uh, and then when this is finished being read in, the callback gets invoked, and we go ahead and data to string. So uh, again, if this is something that you're not familiar with, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'd happily make a more in-depth sync versus async video. This one's really just about the FS uh, module. But I just did want to point out that almost all of the node core modules are asynchronous and almost all of them if we go back to the API 
and just search for read file. Let's find it up here. Almost all of them offer a synchronous version. So if instead of read file, we do read file sync, all of a sudden this becomes blocking. And now if we run node again, we'll get it in the right order. Uh, let's see, expected options to be, oh, right, right, right. So yeah, we don't get, um, if we do read file sync, we don't get a callback function because it's not asynchronous. Um, so if we did read file sync, let me just comment this out here. Uh, this one would be a little bit different. We do S fs uh, read file sync, and we would just give it the index.txt. Uh, and this one, since it's not asynchronous, there's no callback function. We actually have to dump it into something. So we could do like const data equals that, and then we can console log data dot to string. So now if we go ahead and we run this, we get it in the right order, which is the lorem ipsum and then the we are finished. So there's with almost all of the core APIs, you can do things either way. You'll see like the asynchronous way, which has a callback. Um, and this is really great for getting the most out of your server because basically while it's if it's waiting as it's like reading stuff in or whatever, the app can go ahead and do other stuff, whatever it's got to do. Um, but if you need something blocking for whatever reason, uh, check the docs because there's almost always a synchronous version of whatever you're trying to do.